Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and this is a mid-session update for Monday, December 2nd, 2019. Uh, let me start off by providing an update on the technical glitches we've had with the site today. Uh, just to make a long story short, I've um, you know started uh, Right Side of the Chart back in uh, the fall of 2011, officially launched it on January 1st, 2012. In the eight years the site has been running, uh, I've never had an outage that lasted more than, you know, maybe half an hour when servers crash or anything like that. This one's been going on all day. Um, in fact, the chart, I hopefully got this post. Uh, I've been working all morning. I started working on this post, uh, you know, before the market opened. You can see the screenshots. I've always had time stamped on the charts. Back, you know, I took these screenshots, you know, half hour or so before the market opened and started to compose this post so charts I'm watching and then uh, by the time I got done with the third chart here on IWM I, I posted ES IWM that's when the issue started so uh, my hosting company has been spot on over the years I'm very happy with that I usually resolve issues quickly this time around uh, it's been a back and forth they first thought the issue was worth my site then you know hour and a half Working on that, I said, oh, we just got a notification. You have a module or node or something down on the server you're on, and we're working to get that up. And sorry, I won't get into the technical details, but I've spent over three hours on and off the phone with them troubleshooting. And I have uh, on the on the site, you'll notice a couple of functions, such as the like buttons in the trading room, uh, the way you click images, and they usually expand, and you can pan and zoom. I've disabled some things on my end on the site because when the server's having issues, uh, you want the you know the more resources the site draws, it's it's quicker to crash or more likely to crash the server again. Uh, so bear with me. And again, it's Murphy's Law. My apologies, but these things are out of uh, out of my control at least. And um, again, uh, this is usually my hosting company is pretty pretty spot on in getting things up and running, and they are looking into it. So uh, let me get let me get these charts out to you guys. I'll show you what I'm watching, levels to watch, and where I think we're going to go from here. That's that's uh, most important stuff. And again, thank you for your patience on on this. Um, start out with the broad markets, and if time permitting, maybe I'll hit on some of the other things we watch because it's all intertwined, you know, uh, interrelated, I should say. The, you know, Treasury bonds should rally on a day like today. I haven't even had a chance to look at a lot of the charts because I started this morning. Uh, I went through these first through. I was starting with the indexes on the charts I'm watching, got through NQ, ES. This is, again, hopefully you got this post. It should have went out um, uh, shortly before I did this video. And again, I screenshotted these in the morning. So there's the arrow breaks. These are levels I expect reactions. I'm going to get, to, well, let's just start there. And, uh, you know, again, I'll probably follow up with, you know, gold, crude, treasuries, natural gas in separate videos. Let's just talk about the markets because this is the first day the markets have perked up. Uh, we've had an ex a period of extended low volatility. So there's NQ again. Uh, all the charts are always screenshotted. Uh, I've timestamped down. You can see in the bottom uh, lower left-hand corner. And again, so what I'll do is as I do this video, I'll go through charts if there's any updates to make. So let me pull up these charts. Um, there's NQ. So it already uh, effectively had a reaction on that first level where the arrow break was 82.66. Uh, it took out this trend line. And you can see it did it impulsive. So Look, this isn't anything big. It is a big move relative to the recent low volatility, but uh, you have to keep in mind we were at uh, record low, not record low, but extreme lows. We had hit volatility levels not seen since, as I've talked about recently, where all those other corrections started from. And so when you have the VIX down here, that means low volatility. And hence, so today is, and you're going to have a big candle. <clears throat> Let's even look at that. I might jump all over the place here, guys, because I didn't have time to kind of structure this video in advance like I usually do, um, based on the fact I've been troubleshooting, you know, on with tech support all day on and off and troubleshooting on my end as well with the programmer. Uh, so there's the candle, and you can see now we gap down, so the candle itself isn't huge, but you also have a gap there, so it's pretty technically significant. Uh, because what it's done is it's now wiped out uh, the past one here I'll zoom in a little tighter you can see if you look at today's low so far uh, one two three four uh, four previous trading sessions now again you look at the move and it's it's nothing major really and so I don't want to make too much of it right now 
but usually, not always, but usually when you see volatility finally perk up, when you finally see uh, a move like this, here's the VIX again coming off that support zone I'm talking about, uh, it's usually uh, you get more follow through, but not always because we can look back here and let's just highlight that real quick. So uh, again, as we go through these charts, I'll give you my thoughts. You know, you had a, uh, well, no, no, correct, correct take the strike that back we weren't there at the bottom um you know and again i'm doing this live i haven't had a chance to go through this so here you know once it took off you know blah 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 we're down there hit the top of the support zone and that was it and that was obviously you can you can you know reconcile this on the chart of qqq or spy there's where the vix bottomed and that was that move afterwards uh so it, it usually takes off right there like i was about to say well sometimes you get these little moves up but they didn't occur from that support zone. This is the big level we're watching. But here's an example of a false start, a failure to launch, if you will, right there. So uh, that was really leading up to the uh, 2000. And uh, uh, this right here was a 2018, right about August 2018, right there. We came off at this point, we were coming off a lower. This was a historic low, never before seen low end of the range in the VIX heading into the January lows. And we still haven't that was never visited since or after we hit that level back there you can see never in the history of the VIX did it get down this low so this was our normal low end of the range before and since that low back in uh, 2018 before that big uh, correction back in January 2018 this once again became the low end of the range and here's where I was going you can see sometimes you hit that level you get these little starts up and then no follow through but don't become complacent. Sometimes you get them and that's it. That means volatility is perked up right here. And, uh, you know, you're coming off that range. And uh, if I can get the right tool there, boom, you had that big move. In fact, the correction didn't end right there. That's that big drop last fall. Again, you came off there and you had a pretty, that was a big correction. That was the biggest one of 2019 up until that time. Second biggest there. Uh, both those were big corrections in the stock market. We're looking at the VIX upside down. Really, it's, you know, it's like the stock market upside down. I mean, and there it is. So VIX is perking up. And again, let's go back. Look at that QQQ move. Uh, nothing big in itself. However, this is not a random candle. Uh, a random candle, I would call it something that just happened within an uptrend that didn't break any key support levels, any trend lines. Now, this didn't break a trend line today, but if you recall, we broke down recently. So we had the breakdowns, but what I said is they were lacking any impulsive selling. They need a little more evidence. And um, so far, it's helping to confirm that we had a breakdown, a little kickback rally. Uh, we had the divergent high recently and the bearish PPO crossover, which is still well intact. So remember, there was a lot of uh, evidence recently, uh, or some evidence, I should say. I'd use the word I shouldn't use the word a lot of. There was some evidence, uh, bearish technical evidence, but the trend was very resilient and still up. So recently I said we had a couple of check marks, but we needed a couple more. Well, today is a little bit more. Uh, what would be the next more, especially here on the daily chart? A break of the recent lows right here. You can see these three lows. I'll give you that number if you want it here. Uh, about about 200 right there give or take 200 on QQQ and uh, that that I believe will open the door to more impulsive selling more big red candles not walking down remember stocks tend to fall a lot faster than they rise so we're not there yet uh, but certainly a start you certainly have to give another check mark today for the bearish case and as I said be ready um, you know Stocks tend to fall a lot faster than they rise, so if you are in longs and you want to uh, protect profits, not a bad time to tighten up stops. Maybe where would I if I was long, you know, dip buying maybe just below today's lows. If we make another run at today's lows, um, we'll probably continue lower. I think we'll take it out. Uh, the recent lows on SPY, look at right here about 309 or so right there. Uh, we take that out. And again, everything's still in play. We had the recent bearish PPO crossover. We had uh, overbought conditions. You can see on this RSI down below on SPY. Uh, the last time we were this overbought uh, was right about here, where we were above that red line, the 70 uh, level on the RSI, which is overbought. And you can see we had a pretty healthy correction after that. We came overbought there, not as overbought. We hit the uh, the red line right here, the uh, 70 level on the RSI, right about there, and then boom, another correction. So these are, again, a lot of technical evidence, and I will not mix words. I think 
we continue to go lower this week based on what happened today. Uh, let's go back to those 60 minute charts that um, that I posted out this morning. Again, that was NQ. So we broke. You can see we had intersecting support there. Uh, I can't zoom because I have that functionality disabled right now. I can't uh, click and zoom this chart. Uh, my apologies there. I'll, I'll try to, as soon as the site's running, I'll put that back on. Um, but 83.62 or so intersecting with that blue line. We broke that today and we hit again that 82.66 level. That was this morning in pre-market that chart. There it is. We smashed through it very impulsively. So that's a breakdown there. We still have that 8200 level below but again uh, pretty strong negative divergence uh, we had at the, the recent highs. That was NQ. Let's see what, what ES, uh, what that did. Uh, the next chart was ES. We had the blue line there, uptrend line, secondary uptrend line, and then that yellow line there, I said about 3,100, uh, with pretty important support, and that was, again, taken in uh, pre-market. So there it is. We took out that blue trend line where, where we bounced just a hair, or stopped uh, effectively right on that trend line now. So there's a confluence of support. I will give, I will give the market that. Uh, if you want to, you know, give it the benefit of the doubt if you're looking to short or stick with your longs as long as the, the bullish trend is intact because you can't say it's over yet. It's an impulsive drop, but when you just eyeball this chart, I mean, this is an uptrend. Let's just not, you know, mix, you know, get too technical here. And it's clear by all by all metrics, it's still an uptrend. We haven't even undercut the previous low right here. You know, an uptrend is uh, security making a series of higher lows and higher highs and that's what we're doing so that's why that uh, 3100 ish level and of course there's some previous reaction lows just below it so anything really other than just a, maybe a brief uh, momentum fueled overshoot or dip below anything much more than that uh, should do the trick I think to get us back down here to that target I've been looking at for a while that 32 uh, 3022 ish level or so on on us uh, uh, ES that's the S&P 500 futures uh, spy uh, if you guys trade the spy let's look at the 60 minute chart well no let's go back to that daily chart because uh, you can see my levels marked here the one that stands out let me just make it a different color now I'll turn make that uh, blue stands out on this chart that's where I think at minimum we go back to um, why well several reasons but most importantly it's effectively the previous highs right there this is where we broke we had that low volume unimpulsive breakout but a, you know relentless uptrend but again it's still a marginal new high and that's what I was calling for for months now and that any new high I said whether we get it or not and if we do it'd be a marginal new high so far that's all it was about four and a quarter percent uh, since the last breakout right here above the previous all-time high in SPY and this is important remember we have these building divergences and right now I'm pointing out these near-term targets that I think are very likely to be hit uh, and likely to be hit soon as in this week um, but this this tells me it could morph into something much more and I've covered that in the past how do you trade it there are no guarantees yes this trend is so resilient I'm sure it's got a lot of people second-guessing um, you know, uh, you know th th whether or not we're going to get a any correction anytime in the foreseeable future. Sentiment has shifted. Uh, the outlook for the economy, you know, economists, everybody's talking. You know, the, you know, more more upside and the recession risks are over and and blah blah blah. And, and maybe that's true. So the way to trade it. I think this is still very much a possibility based on the technical posture of the charts and and that's I put a lot more stock into that than what economists are saying and including uh, the the recent flow the ebb and flow of the headlines of the economic data and reports because those can change and those are often uh, lagged in time some of those reports are subject to revision so how to trade it well you can make a quick pullback trade um, you know down there and that's another three or so percent or you can just ride it out if you're a swing trader and uh, you know start layering in um, if you haven't already started and uh, just trail your stops. You know, if you get down to 302.46 or so, maybe put a stop somewhere up here around 309. It's in percentage terms, it's not really that much. Again, that's if you want to trade the markets. There's a lot of individual stocks, and I promise you, I will put some focus now. I have, you know, quite a bit of shorts on watch lists, as you guys probably noticed. And you know, I talk about the 
pullback targets and divergences on the broad market, yet 90 plus, if not 100% of the trade ideas that I've shared in recent months um, on the equity, you know, anything to do with the stock market, not talking about commodities or non, non-correlated assets, they've been long trade ideas. So, um, But there are short trade ideas. I just haven't put them out there because the trend has been too resilient and uh, trying to short uh, individual stocks in a, in a you know, uh, such a persistent uptrend is, is very tough. Now it might get a lot easier. So I will follow up with those setups, whether they're official or unofficial, and I'll convey my thoughts. All right. Uh, moving on. Like I said, I'm sort of uh, making this up as I go here because I'm just catching up on the day. But uh, there it is. There's support right there, about two, uh, 236 I just mentioned. And where I think uh, at minimum we pull back to before a decent reaction is right about here. You have this uh, downtrend line that was taken out. Uh, call that, let me give you a level here. Let me turn this line on. It's about 195 or so. Uh, that's a horizontal line at 195.37, but there's that downtrend line just below that we broke out of there on uh, QQQ. But that would that would align with that pullback on SPY to test the breakout of the recent highs, the previous high. And what is that from here? That would be a drop of, let's say we well, if we hit the 195.37, about 3.4. And if we come into the downtrend line, depending on where it picks up, about 4%. So I, you know, I think the odds are pretty good for a 4% pullback from here. And I haven't, you can see, I haven't had time to clean up this six. No, there it is. I just had the different board. 60-minute uh, pullback targets are still that target zone right there. 194.40-ish up to about 195.68. That's the target zone I've been covering the last couple of weeks, and that, that aligns with that 4% or so downside. 199.80 is still, I think, a uh, pretty important level. And I'll, I'll tell you, probably, you know what, I'd say even 200 this line here. I'm going to color that yellow. That may do the trick because that's those recent lows. I, I believe this would do the trick. If you're looking for the next objective place to uh, add a short and if I zoom in here, which I'm doing now in the 60 minute chart, you can see uh, what appears to be a potential bear flag pattern. So here's what you want to watch for today. Hopefully I get this video out to you guys if it does play out before it breaks down. Should we break down and you get an impulsive breakdown, a big red candle down below that looks something like this. The flag could certainly form a little more. It may be foiled. Sometimes you get what looks like a bear flag and you break to the upside and you go from there and then there's that's not a it's an untriggered pattern, if you will. But if it breaks to the downside, look for impulsive selling. Look for another big red candle like one of these two. And that would take us down in and it could be, and I think it most likely would be the catalyst for a breakdown below that uh, these two support levels here about you know again about the 200 ish level and the flag would measure down to about here but that would have done some pretty pretty good technical damage so uh, we could continue on down there all right so those are the levels to watch and spy let me give you spy traders that uh, I haven't updated this chart as I said kind of doing this as I go here but uh, nothing technically has changed for weeks. We had divergence build on the R uh, PPO down here. RSI, you burned through the divergence. See right here, you made a higher high, but you also had an extreme overbought reading, and, and uh, you have to factor that in. All right, let's 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 go back to the futures, and then we'll wrap this up because I do want to get this video out to you guys, and hopefully, um, yeah, hopefully the issues with the site will be over. Uh, so by the time I go to publish this, uh, yeah, close to divergence, really flatline divergence, if you will. You know, that's when you make about equal highs on the indicators. This is IWM, by the way. Sorry, guys, I'm jumping all over the place today. Uh, IWM negative divergence. You know, IWM had what you want to watch for IWM is we had that breakout recently, the big 159.40ish area, and we're coming back in hard. Like I think I said to you last week, I believe I said, look probably at least get a back test on that breakout and uh, you know if you're bullish and I said I might look to go long there right now I'm not uh, I'd rather miss a turn I'm just gonna kinda I, I need to get my bearings after today I need to get this site working again um, but it is objective if you were looking to buy IWM either you missed the breakout or you took a starter position you're looking to add anything down around that 159 ish area probably about where we are now to be honest with you down to but probably not much below these recent lows right here because if you take those out sometimes when you go to breakout you back test a level 
perfectly, but more often you're either going to undercut it slightly or you might even reverse a little bit above it. It makes it too easy to come right in at that level. And I might have my line a little different. That's why I keep saying 190, we'll call it 160, 159 to 160-ish. But um, so if you're bullish and you, you think IWM has a lot more upside, I'm skeptical to break out now. I told you last week I may consider, but I'm not. I'm going to hold off for now. Of course, I need to get my focus back on, on the charts uh, really before I jump on anything uh, else, especially, you know, like picking up IWM long. And then a stop somewhat below there because if we smash on through there, then what that means is what we had here is a false breakout, just like we had a false breakout right here. And you can see what happened last time. We went right back to the bottom of the, that's the sideways trading zone on IWM. And so if again, it depends what your outlook on the market is, what your trading style is. Uh, so if you're short IWM now, or if you end up shorting it or RTY in the small caps, same story. You can just set your stops, give it a little room. There's volatility is expanded. You have to remember that when you're trading. If you're running a half a percent or a one percent stop on an index uh, and volatility expands, the back and forth gyrations can often take you out. Um, there's no easy answer as to what stop you should use. It all depends on, on uh, really where you think things might go. If you're targeting for the bottom of this range, even lower, you could even set a stop above the recent highs. If IWM somehow powers up, comes here, powers up above the recent highs, unless there's something glaringly bearish in the charts, that, that's going to be pretty bullish. But of course, I'm speaking on just IWM. I'd also want to see what is SPY, what are SPY and QQQ doing at the time. All right, let's, um, let me pause this, see if there's anything else I want to cover, and, uh, and then we'll wrap it up. No, I think that's it for now. I'd rather get this out to you guys. Um, and if I see anything else, like I said, we have just another check mark today is what I would call it. Um, you know, the trend has been extremely resilient. Uh, so it's up to you. It's I can't tell you it's the highest probability shorting up, but there's XLK and that's something to note. That's something I didn't cover here. I'll give you a BOD trend line now that we have a potential reaction here. BOD is what I call, I refer to benefit of the doubt trend line. Remember we had this one little green candle I excluded there because this was a much better fit on the trend line. And so XLK, which by far is the most important sector, the largest in the S&P 500 and NASDAQ 100. We had a breakdown, a back test recently, and now an impulsive rejection, not just a rejection. Remember, we moved down on, uh, what was that, Friday's candle. I was out Friday, uh, but, a, you know, it barely a slightly red close. But now this is impulsive. So there's an impulsive rejection. And now, uh, since we have bounced off the lows so far, we have a reaction there. But uh, if we take that out, then that's it. And I, I think, uh, you know, especially a red, another red candle tomorrow will increase the odds of more downside. And uh, so as I wrap it up here, let me just say that, yes, the price action has been extremely resilient. Yes, the rhetoric, the outlook for the markets, um, the economy and all that good stuff is there. But uh, nothing has changed from a technical perspective in the charts, I'm talking the long-term charts, the monthly, the weekly, the daily charts, we've been grinding higher, uh, kind of ignoring or, or you know, refusing to succumb to those divergences, but yet they're still intact. And as of just last week, remember, we had the bearish PPO crossovers for the first time, uh, well, on, on QQQ and SPY and all that, I think since back here. That's XLK, had a little whippy uh, whipsaw signal there, but it, you know, crossed over there and still went down. All right, I'm gonna wrap it up here and get this out to you guys and uh, I will follow up with anything else I see uh, in uh, static charts or maybe another end of day video. This has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. Hope you enjoyed it.